Hi, I'm Karen Gracie, and um, I'm currently a faculty member at Kent State University, and I've also been a member of the Association of Moving Image Archivists since, uh, if my memory serves correctly, 1992. So it's, it's been quite a few years, enjoyable years. Uh, I think a lot of people have a story like this where they have that moment where they know that that is the field that they want to go into. Move. Yeah, I'm sure I didn't know it was moving image archiving back then, but um, you know, I got bitten by the film preservation bug. Um, I was an exchange student. Well, not well. I did a year abroad in Paris when I was undergraduate, and was exposed to lots of early film while I was there. And uh, I just said, you know. Who takes care of this? And you know, start doing. This was back before any of the programs existed for educating moving image archivists. And I lived in Northern California, and I said, "Well, where can I go to learn how to do this?" And um, I actually wrote a letter to the American Film Institute, and a lovely man named Greg Luco uh, <laughs> responded to me, uh, and uh, we all know Greg, right? Um, and he explained to me different paths, and um, and I also discovered that uh, this new association was had just been founded, and it was open to anybody. So it was meeting in San Francisco. And I, it was a short drive away for me. I said, I'm gonna do this. So that's how I came to the association. You know, it was a pretty tight-knit association back then. Um, I can't remember exactly how many members there were, but there couldn't have been much more than maybe 100 to 150. And so we all fit very easily in a room. And I just have these clear memories. The first day of the conference, uh, they went around the entire room and every person introduced themselves and said where they were, uh, which it would probably take half a day if we did that now. <laughs> um, and I think there were, there were just a, you know, a few of us brave souls who were students. And uh, I think at that point I knew that I was going to UCLA. I was starting at UCLA in the, um, the library school. And I can't remember where the other people were, but it was just people who had somehow discovered EMEA and were very eager and excited, so. <clears throat> I have always, I think this is probably a favorite memory for a lot of people is the archival screening nights, just because it, I think, really introduced many of us to this larger universe of moving images that went beyond Hollywood. I think a lot of people, um, at least, or I don't know, today the students seem much more savvy than I was, but um, you know, the, this idea of like working with Hollywood movies was, you know, that was what it was, right? <laughs> um, but just realizing that there was that much larger world out there and getting that exposure to not just, you know, Hollywood film of the 30s, 40s, and 50s, but silent film and uh, industrial filmmaking and educational filmmaking and avant-garde and just that whole, and so it was this really magical thing. Uh, and this was, in the early days, they didn't have any um, real rigorous regulations for how long the clips were. And, you know, you'd have these screenings that would go on until one o'clock in the morning and things were just raucous uh, and, funny. I mean, they still are, but you know, when you have fewer people, it's a little more intimate uh, and not to get too nostalgic about it, but you know, I think over time, you know, and they've moved that night. It used to be like the crowning achievement of the conference. It was at the end and um, it, it's still a wonderful thing to go to, still essential. Uh, and I, I think just really encapsulates what the conference is about, I think. I think it's the thing that led me into being an educator, because when I first started out, I wanted to be a working archivist. Uh, and then as I went through my graduate programs, because I was at the time they didn't have that one program, so I was cobbling together. I did an MLIS, and then I did a master's in cinema studies, um, and just sort of coming to the realization that. I wanted to be able to give back and nurture the next generation of people. And I joined the education committee and have been involved with it uh, pretty consistently over the years. Um, back 
when I first started, Eddie Richman was uh, um, one of the people who was uh, running that committee and just, you know, kind of seeing how that committee and its responsibilities have changed over time and becoming more engaged with that. Uh, and so when I went in and I decided to go into a PhD program, it just it was it's a great vehicle for sort of pushing forward the larger agenda of education for moving image archivists, whether that be graduate programs or uh, continuing education or what have you. And uh, also it's something, I think initially when Eddie was still engaged, it was really about getting those resources together to support people. Um, you know, that was when the scholarships still lived within the education committee and that was seemed to be, it was just like a really key thing that they did. But um, as the graduate programs were established and, I, I, and uh, we started looking at other continuing education options, I think it be, became a little bit more about shaping directions uh, and, you know, nurturing, nurturing people as they move through their profession. So, it's, so I've been very involved with the education committee for a long time, and I think that's been sort of a key reason where, why I'm doing what I'm doing today. Oh, yeah, that was, uh, that was a little bit of a crazy moment. Um, it's funny because when I stepped into that role, it was not with the idea that I was going to be doing it for two years. It was one issue. <laughs> uh, and uh, so that was, I mean, that was a really valuable experience and I'm very happy that I was able to contribute to it continuing and not, because you know, there was a real possibility when um, Chris Horak stepped away that it was going to be at sea and, you know, academic journals can't afford to be at sea too long. Um, so, you know, I, although I, I don't think that I brought this incredible vision to the journal, I do think that, you know, I sort of kept the wheels in motion long enough to get the next permanent editor in there, but it was kind of funny um, that how long it took to get that person, <laughs> the next person in. Uh, but it's, it's been such an essential um, journal, I think, for the profession. Um, I, you know, I've published in it, and I know a lot of people who've published in it, and it's, um, you know, it's, it's really the, the only place to do um, moving image archiving specific work. Um, you know, even the American Archivist, which I'm also involved in for Society of American Archivists, they do occasionally publish things, but I think it has a very different focus than the moving image. So it's, it's an incredible resource that we just need to keep supporting and growing. So I'm happy that it's, it's continuing today in good hands. Uh, yes, um, I, I do have selected pieces that I, I have them read. Um, I don't, um, in my current position, I don't have a full semester long class anymore in moving image archiving. Unfortunately, I, I teach a shorter workshop, but um, there's always a few key things that I direct people to and I always make sure people are aware of that as an essential resource. Uh, and the fact that, um, I think, uh, I'm trying to remember if we actually, if that's open access or not at this point, but uh, yeah, okay, it's not. But so for those, for my students who are actually, uh, you know, enrolled, excuse me, <clears throat> they, you know, they can get at least access to the back issues. Um, and that's, you know, so there've been some pretty key pieces. Um, and in my own work, um, there have been a couple of pieces that I just keep going back to because they were kind of keystone pieces. For me, like Elena uh, Rossi Snook's piece on um, film collections and public libraries actually sparked a whole research project for me uh, that I'm, I'm pursuing right now. So there have just been, you know, so even, you know, I think Elena that started out as maybe thesis work for her that turned into a piece, but it, it just was, there's just not a lot out there on that particular aspect of moving image collections. And she, there's, there's lots of little sort of crumbs that she dropped that she could keep pursuing um, along the way. And, and so that's, um, you know, from, from a research perspective, there's just pieces I keep coming back to. Well, I think um, for people who, um, 
you know, SAA definitely fills an important role in that, you know, it is inclusive, all, di all different types of formats. Um, so you are going to get some of that, but if you're looking for where the real conversations are happening and for the people who are really interested and engaged on a very deep level with um, moving images, you have to come to EMEA. Um, you know, I, I would say it'd be great if you belong to both. Um, it, and it's funny, some years SAA has really good content in their conferences um, for um, audiovisual, and sometimes they don't. So it really, it, you know, it, it totally depends on the year. And so there's gonna be some years if you went to SAA, you would get very little. Whereas if you come to EMEA, it's like 100% all the time, you know, everything is audiovisual. Um, but so, um, you know, as a, like I say, as an educator, I see the value in both, but I think it's essential that we have a separate entity from SAA um, to, to have conversations about things that, quite frankly, the average archivist doesn't necessarily care all that much about. You know, I, I think uh, for the, um, the people who have moving images in their collections and they have general needs, SAA is a great place to start. And I will say that because of SAA's publication program, um, they often are generating resources that are really important. My, my book was published by SAA. I, you know, I wish EMEA had more of a publication presence um, beyond the journal, but it doesn't at this point. So um, they often are the source of good information. I believe that there is a new book coming out. Um, I'm not sure if it's coming out in 2016 or 2017 um, that's in this area that's being published by SAA. So they have the resources to do bigger things sometimes than what EMEA can. So that's one of the benefits of SAA.